Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev. Today we continue to construct our clone about vegetation versus the undead. Now last time we made the war a reality by adding zombies to face off against the plants. We also added the walnuts. And last but not least, we added the interactions of zombies eating plants and plants shooting zombies. And today we continue to add warriors to the battle, focusing on plants that tend to alter zombie behavior. Indeed, we'll be focusing on the snow pea and the kernel putt. We not only have to get these two to alter zombie behavior, but we'll also see the return of Let's Dev's worst enemy ever, math. So let's not waste any more time and get to the coding. First up was the snow pea. We needed sprites, so I first duplicated the pea shooter sprites, colored them blue, and added them to the plant object. Next, I moved over to the projectile object and added a type variable. Much like the plant object, this is going to help determine the projectile's behavior. In this case, the ability to freeze zombies. However, before I could get going, I realized that, uh, for some reason, the plants would stop firing when zombies got close enough to start eating them. I ended up spending a chunk of this session's time reviewing the code to figure out why, only to come up with no reason. So we'll just have to make a mental note of this issue and come back to it in the future. So anyway, now that our projectile had types, I also added a chance variable that would be used for anything requiring, well, a chance of something happening. Next, I moved on to the zombie to first figure out how I'd be handling the zombie's walk speed while frozen. In Plants vs Zombies, frozen zombies walk at a much slower pace than they do unfrozen. And so we needed to decide on not only how long a zombie would be frozen for, but also its walking speed. Instead of using alarms, which would have been the easy route to go, I went with a counter system. It works much like a cooldown system in that if frozen, the zombie would thaw when the timer hits zero. And in the collision event for the zombie when it comes in contact with a frozen P projectile, it would put the zombie into the frozen state as well as start the frozen timer. I'm not sure how it works in the original, but I settled on a accumulative freeze time that would max out at 3 seconds. Thankfully it worked and we had even slower moving zombies when frozen. I then added a similar cooldown system for the eating phase of the zombies because zombies also eat slower when frozen. Again, I wasn't exactly sure of the actual timing, so I went with simply halving it, like the walk speed. So with the frozen effects working about as well as it was going to get, I moved on to the kernel putt. First we needed a sprite and a sprite I doodled. I also recolored a kernel which we won't be getting to today because it works exactly like a P does. And finally, I doodled the stick of butter, our main focus going forward. The butter in Plants vs Zombies stuns zombies momentarily, stopping them in their tracks. And what's interesting is the main issue with the butter wasn't going to be mechanical, it's going to be visual. I started by creating a new object that would act just like the projectile, only it would be used for all projectiles that fire in an arc. And it's here that our old nemesis math returns. We need to figure out a way to properly display the stick of butter leaving the kernel putt and reaching its destination when making it there in an arc. And as far as I'm aware, GameMaker does not have an easy way to do this, so I had to get resourceful. Now, I could have faked it. If memory serves me right, a lot of the catapulted projectiles would go off screen, so if I wanted to, I could have simply just had the projectile fly off screen, reposition it, and have it drop where it's supposed to. And believe me, it's not entirely off the table. But I wanted to challenge myself. So I started by first determining the destination of the butter. Then I added a few other variables that would hopefully assist me in my endeavor. The plan was simple, have the projectile exist in three states. The first is the acceleration state, the second is the deacceleration state, and the third is the contact state. The second state would initiate halfway between the start location and the destination, and it would basically mirror the acceleration state, which meant whatever happened in state 1 would happen in state 2 in reverse, thus creating an illusion of an arc in the process. And long story short, it didn't work. Through various tweaks, I was able to get something more stable that kind of resembled an arc shot, but it wasn't consistent in the slightest. I even rewrote the code at one point in hopes that it would work better, only to get similar results. Overall, I spent roughly 40 minutes tweaking and tweaking, only to get nowhere. So instead of continuing on, just to feel better about the situation, I added collision code to the zombies to at least have them placed in a stunned state if they touch the butter during the its contact state. And sadly, that was it for my time with this session. 
Now, I would say this was a 50-50 endeavor halted once again by my inability to uh, math properly. And looking it up online afterwards just made my head spin, so <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how we'll handle the art code. But again, the whole faking it thing ain't off the table just yet, so desperate times may call for desperate measures. Regardless, progress is still progress, and we progressed at least a little, so it wasn't a complete wash. But that does in fact bring us to the end of today's episode of Let's Dev. So remember that if you like this video or enjoy Let's Dev in general, be sure to hit that like button. If you aren't already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new episode. And as always, be sure to leave your thoughts on our progress in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.